Th thank you, Professor Martin, and, and thank you all for, for coming to this. I, I guess you don't have to, so I really appreciate you doing this. <laughs> I don't know if there's any implicating any, uh, the role here. Um, so what, what I want to do is take about 30 minutes or so to talk about what's going on in the economy right now, what's going on in the financial markets. I, I want to give you a little bit of background beforehand before I get into this, uh, just on, you know, um, sort of a few reflections on working in Michigan State and, and on my PhD and then what I've done since then. Uh, but then I want to talk about, about the economy uh, using what we call our guide to markets, meaning Jake Morgan Sons, talk about some of the issues that I think are really important right now. And then I want to open up to you all for any questions. So please, I'm talking, dig up some questions. There are no bad questions. Uh, I really want to get some questions at the end. I want to leave some, some time for that. The second thing that I would say is really important for everybody who wants to study economics is economics is all about the numbers. It's analytical. And a lot of you are by nature analytical. You're kind of, you, know, you like doing the math. But you've got to work on the communications and the literary side too. What makes a difference when you know, what makes a difference when you're looking for a job, what makes a difference when you're actually working in a job and trying to advance in a job is the ability of you to your ability to express your ideas. You've got to get your point across. You know, one of the questions I always ask when we, whenever we hire somebody is, um, who's your favorite author? As though I actually don't care who their favorite author is. I want to know they have a favorite author. I want to know they actually enjoy reading. Because people who enjoy reading tend, tend to like writing. I want, I want to talk to somebody who could look you in the face and just argue a point. You know, when people, I was speaking with some graduate students earlier on, and they, they were saying, you know, any, uh, any suggestions on, on how to study for prelims and so forth. You know, get in a small group and just fight it out, duke it out. Be the leader of your group. You know, you, you're the person, you, you've all sat through the same lecture, you all got the same notes. Now, argue that about what these notes mean, but just try, you know, work on communication skills. Writing, um, speaking, um, you know, I, I think that's what so many, so many analytical people fall down on Wall Street. Frankly, you know, any success that I've had or my team has had in, in, over the years in Wall Street has been precisely because we try to be the anti-Wall Street when it comes to communications. We're not big into writing 65-page reports. We're big into explaining the way the world is. Well, the first thing you do is you need a framework. Any speech needs a framework. And the framework I usually use is this. Growth, jobs, Profits, inflation, rates, risks, and opportunities. You talk about economic growth first. Once you understand GDP growth, how the economy is doing in terms of people buying stuff, then you can talk about jobs, how many people are being hired. Once you've got growth and jobs down, then you can talk about corporate profits, how much money the corporations make in this economy. Once you've talked about that, then you can talk about inflation. Is all this economic growth that's causing inflation to go up or go down? Now, once you know about inflation, you can talk about interest rates, because in the long run, even though Ben Bernanke doesn't seem to get this right now, in the long run, interest rates really are determined by inflation. And once you've got that, growth, job, profits, um, uh, inflation down, uh, talk about interest rates, then you can talk about what risks are out there, what could cause everything to fall apart, and then you talk about what opportunities, what, what could actually help you make some money in this environment. Because the American economy is very like a plane with a taxiway right now. It is, it's moving forward slowly. It's not moving backwards, it's moving forward slowly, but it hasn't exactly taken off. This is very unusually slow growth. If you, if you could average the, the, the height of those bars there, economic growth, since the start of this recovery, it's only about 2.2% growth per year since the start of the recovery. Now, normally in a recovery, we go in 3%, 4%, 5%. True. And you know what happens? The problem is that uncertainty is so damaging because you know what people do when they're uncertain? They do nothing. You know what the three most dangerous words in economics are? Anyone know what the three most dangerous words in economics are? Wait and see. Everyone decides to wait and see. What they see is never good. And that's the problem, because all this uncertainty about government policy is causing the private sector to wait and see. Well, they, well, I'll wait and see before I buy something. I'll wait and see before buying that new car. Uh, I'll wait and see before investing in the stock market. And that is the drive of the economy. And this is the, this is the important point. There's another thing I want to say about that plane of the tarmac. You know, I, I hate it when I'm sitting on a plane of the tarmac waiting to take off. There's a long queue and I can't get it into the air. But I'll tell you what I'm not scared of. I'm not scared of stalling out and crashing. You ever seen a, a plane stall out and crash when it's on the taxiway? No, it's got to take off first. 
And this is really important to understand about the American economy right now, because you hear all these things about how weak it is, and you, if you turn on CNN, you'll hear somebody talk about a double-dip recession or how we're going to plunge back into recession. We're not. It's very, it's very hard to hurt yourself jumping out of a basement window. Until we get these things reloaded, they're not going to collapse. And this has been tremendously important because every summer, you know, each of the last three summers, people said, oh, the economy's going to keel over. No, it's not. There is no stall speed in the American economy right now. Because, I mean, it doesn't mean it's absolutely invulnerable. There, is, there are some shocks that could cause a, a, a sort of quasi-recession or near-recession, but it's very hard to get a genuine recession until we rebuild these cyclical sectors. Let me talk a little bit about jobs. Here is the unemployment rate over the last 50 years. It's pretty high, 8.1% right now. But it's not the highest it's ever been in the last 50 years. In fact, this last recession didn't even see a peak in unemployment, which is the highest we've seen in the last 50 years. Back in October 2009, see that last peak down there? That, that was 10.1% this time around on the unemployment rate. But if you go back to the uh, 1982, we actually took, hit 10.8%. So um, the unemployment rate's come down a little bit. What matters to you all is the fact that every week in America, a million people are hired. Think about that. There are not a million winning lottery tickets in America every week, but there are a million jobs being built every week in America. Yes. You need to get an education. Congratulations, you've done the first step of this. This, this is the unemployment rate by education level in America in, in August. In August of this year, if you had not finished high school, the unemployment rate was 12.0%. If you finished high school, but you hadn't gone on to, um, uh, to uh, but you, but you didn't go on to college, it was 8.8%. If you did a bit of college, it was 6.6%. If you had an undergraduate degree or better, it was 4.1%. So getting an education dramatically increases your chances uh, of, uh, uh, of, uh, get, of getting a job. What's more, we really believe in, in more education. I, I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not here making a speech for the graduate school, but I, I just want to point out, this is the average income of a high school graduate in America. If you get a college degree, you immediately put it up by $26,000 per year. And if you get an advanced degree, you can add another $30,000 per year to that. Education is crucial. I, I'm not banking on the intelligence of Washington. I am banking on the cowardice of Washington. I don't believe that Congress has the guts to look the public in the face on the 15th of January as they show them the tattered remains of their paychecks after these tax increases have occurred. They'll come to a compromise. One question, though, is when they come to the right compromise, what we need, you know, we face this fiscal cliff, what we need is a fiscal ladder, one rung at a time, bringing down about 1% of GDP per year. That's what we need to do. Both sides should agree on this. The question is, will they, will they want to get there? Remember that in the long run, this, this economy will tend to grow. People, get, people try and scare you about all sorts of things. The truth is, America is very well designed to grow. The great secret to America, and I, I say this after living here most of my life, is the American people. As a people, we spend too much, we work too hard, we're always trying to get ahead. And a people who spend too much, work too hard, and try to get ahead, tends to make an economy grow. Economies do grow in the long run, and in the long run, things come back to balance. The trick is to invest when you're investing in a way that benefits you as markets come back to balance, rather than hurts you. <coughs>